claims to follow the Torah, and even Messianic or Nazarene Israel, uh, Israelite believers in the Mashiach claim to follow the Torah, but we sin all the time. Sin is a problem common to man. Amen? Amen. And non-Jewish believers, those of our brethren that are still stuck in the church system, they often do more Torah than, than we do, claim to do Torah, but they do it, they feed the, the poor, they clothe the naked, they visit the prisoners, they do Monte Yahu 25, and they fulfill Monte Yahu 25. But they're not eat, uh, observing Kashrut, they're not keeping Shabbat, they're not keeping the Moadim. So that they are guilty of the sins of, um, they're guilty of the sins of what? Commission. Judah, on the other hand, that knows the Torah, that studies the Torah, that, that meditates on the Torah, Judah, on the other hand, is guilty of the sins of what? Omission. Omission. Okay, so Judah, um, especially Nazarene Israelite believers, okay, what do we do? Um, so Jude, and people who, who claim to keep the Torah, don't we fall short in celebrating the Moadim? Don't we make mistakes? Don't we, uh, by accident, eat something that we shouldn't eat? I mean, so those who keep Torah still fall short. And those who are in the church system, they're doing the Torah, but they, don't, they may not know the verse, they may not know the chapter, but they're, sometimes they do more Torah than those who study the Torah, right? So the point is, both houses fall short of Yahweh's glory, okay? Judah uh, and those of us who are Nazarene Israelite believers who want to do the Torah, we fall short. Those of our brethren in the church system, um, they usually short, fall short because of ignorance or because of refusal to obey Yahweh. When they refuse to obey Yahweh, they're guilty of the sins of commission. On the other hand, uh, uh, we who study Torah, but don't clothe the naked, don't feed the hungry, don't visit the sick, we are guilty of the sins of omission, so that everybody breaks Torah. So therefore Yahweh knew that the Torah could not make our flesh. Look at verse 3, Romeo 8.3. Yahweh knew that the Torah could not make our flesh obedient. Yahweh did not send Yeshua to renew or regenerate or renew, make the flesh. He sent Yeshua to condemn the flesh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I said Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So the Torah could not remake our flesh into and to obey Yahweh because it was weak. So Yahweh sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, was Yeshua sinful? No, Yeshua didn't have sin. But his flesh looked like our sinful flesh. And through that flesh that looked like our sinful flesh, but really was Kadosh flesh, he condemned our sin in the flesh so that we should not trust in our mitzvot and in our works of righteousness. Hello? Right? And that's what Rob Shul was talking about last week. All believers fall short. The wages of sin is death, the gift of Yahweh is eternal life. All have sinned, Romeo 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. So again, part two of this week, of this message, understanding our church brother. We've got to try to understand these people. Amen. We learned last week, from last week's teaching, which I hope you get, that they're not condemned. They are guilty of the sins of what? Commission. Yahweh says, do this. They don't. We who keep Torah are guilty of the sins of omission. Yeshua tells us to feed the hungry, to build hospices, to build hospitals, to, to, to build clinics, to build care facilities, human care facilities, health care facilities, and we do nothing. The Nazarene Israelite movement has yet to build its first hospital. Have you ever run into the hospital of Nazarene Israel in Miami? And you never will, because all we do is sit around and talk Torah. We are guilty of the sins of what? Omission. 
the church, our brothers in the church, who know the word, they understand the word, and they follow Yeshua's Torah of doing good to their brothers and sisters and doing good to their neighbors. They're building a hospital. They're building a hospice. They're building the drug and alcohol uh, treatment centers. They're doing it. And we who talk Torah and Midrash Torah, we don't do anything. Right. Amen. Right. I could give you two hours. You can't name one hospice we built, one alcohol recovery program we've established, one drug recovery program we've established, one, uh, one, um, one nursing home that, or, 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 or nursing home care centers that we run, or health care that we provide. We do nothing, we provide nothing, we have nothing, and we just talk a good game and we do nothing. But we're Torah observant. So here the church, our church brethren, are doing the Torah, even though they don't know the chapter and verse that they're doing, even though they're not keeping Shabbat in the morning. And many, many of us in the Nazarene Israelite movement who claim to do Torah, amen, when it comes to doing it, we, 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 what do we do? When someone in our congregation needs money, what do we do? We call Catholic services. We call Catholic charities. Why? Because we know they have facilities and we have nothing to offer anybody because all we do is like to talk a good game. And when someone can't pay their life bill, when someone needs help, what do we do? When someone needs shelter from Hurricane Wilma, what do we do? What do we do? Forget about the Jewish community. What do we do? We contact somebody other than ourselves. Why? Because we have nothing. Remember what I told you last week? Yahweh's worked on Yahweh's way, never lacks Yahweh's provision. I'll say that again. Yahweh's worked on Yahweh's way, never lacks Yahweh's provision. So that either we're not doing Yahweh's work, or we're not doing it his way. Or maybe we're not doing his work, or doing it his way. So when next time you need help, next time you need counseling, you have to find a good Bible-based counselor. Where do you go? You look for a Christian counselor, don't you? Of course you look for a Christian counselor, because there's very few Nazarene Israelite counselors who are willing to donate their time and their gifts to, to do the Torah, because they're so busy arguing what time Shabbat begins, what time the new moon begins, what time Hanukkah begins. Do you like the menorah left to right or right, right to left? Should the middle candle be red, white, or blue? Is your head covering really kosher? It's too long, it's too short, it's too rectangular, it's too circular. What constitutes a kosher chale? If it has two strands and it's, and it's intertwined, it's kosher. But if it has three strands, you can't eat it. But, you're, but one person says, yeah, but your chale is, is illegal. Why? Because your chale has no sesame seed. In order for it to be a really good challah, you must have seeds on your challah. And if you don't have sesame seeds on your challah, you're going to the chel. <laughs> now, next time you get sick, go into the Yellow Pages and look for Nazarene Israelite or Messianic Hospital of Pompano Beach. Go ahead. Good luck. You're going to need it. Or how about, how about Messianic Nazarene Israelite Counseling Services for married couples who are having difficulties in their marriage? Good luck. You're gonna need it. You're not gonna find it. So where do we go? To the church. So our church brother in love, Yeshua, they're born again, they're washing the blood, and they're doing Torah. They don't know the chapter and the verse, but they're doing Torah. We know the chapter and the verse, and we do nothing. So we're guilty of the sins of what? Omission. They're guilty of the sins of committing. Their pastors know what the word says, and they still pe teach their people to commit sin. But all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. And that's what Rav Shaul is teaching us. Look, by the Torah, nobody can be justified because the man's flesh is weak and sinful. And the Torah was not designed to change man's sinful flesh, so Yahweh found a way. He entered the world himself. He took on a body himself, and he condemned all sin in everybody's flesh because he showed that there was one flesh that was sanctified. Hello? There was one set flesh that was kadosh. Amen? Amen. Yahweh found flesh that can be justified, but <laughs> not our flesh. So it never is by Torah keeping. Now go with me to Romeo 411. And we'll pick up where we left, last, left off last week. 
I'll